one the Digital Health and Care Institute uh, doing the research in the knowledge management piece and obviously as Michael talked through earlier um, we try and cover lots of different areas of digital health and care but one element of that which is really important is skills and understanding how do the current and future skills gaps within the digital health sector and um, what they look like and is education provision matching the skills gaps so in that light we were commissioned by the by skills development scotland last year to write a report based on this message and just to let you understand the digital health sector if you want to know, it's obviously put into two categories there's companies which produce provide service digital health solutions that's the smes corporates and all that and then there's the other side of the coin at the end of this for health and care service providers which produce the, uh, these, these products and we were focused on the left hand side so the companies which produce and provide the products just to make that clear okay and as uh, michael also mentioned just slightly in depthness with digital health that can be seen as involving all the cameras you can see on screen what we find more common in our work is Everyone has a different definition of digital health. Even in our own office, you can talk to someone who's taking a desk and help make it something else. Uh, so for, for the purposes of this report, we really saw digital health as being the intersection of healthcare services, mobile technology, and ICT for the purposes of digitally collecting up points of care to enable safe and secure sharing of health information and enabling safe and secure uh, provision of healthcare. So the digital health sector nests within the digital technology sector, which is a huge sector within the UK and creates jobs at 2.8 times faster than the rest of the economy. Um, and the digital health sector is expected to be worth globally 370 billion US dollars by 2024. So it has huge promise to be able to create economic growth, development, and jobs, obviously. Um, because of that job market, we looked at what exists in Scotland's uh, corporate digital health sector. So companies with specific focus on digital health employ 7,000 people in Scotland. And then these are mostly SMEs. They exist in and around the Central Belt, Glasgow and Edinburgh. Uh, counter to that, there are around 140 IT companies active in health, uh, within the healthcare sector in Scotland. So the definition of digital health is so broad. They can't really be said to exist in the digital health sector, so the numbers are all over the place in the value of the sector and the numbers of people working in digital health change, depending again on who you're talking to. Uh, on the slide, I've kind of called it haywire, but um, the digital health sector, all of those different job roles exist, and the ones you expect are the ones that are on screen. The ones that you wouldn't expect are off screen, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but you have software and hardware developers, designers, um, everything that you see up there, but also consultants, specialist nurses, uh, health analysts, health data analysts, um, librarians, knowledge exchange managers, and officers such as ourselves. And because of that massive range of job roles, there's a certain range of skills as well. Company Connecting is a consultancy company that uh, can introduce different companies together to bridge skills gaps that they identify, and they did a similar task to us, they went out and uh, really surveyed all the high-end corporates and the skills that you see up on the screen are the top 10 skills identified by digital health companies and they were pretty much mirrored word for word for everyone we consulted with uh, software development being number one uh, on everyone's list and then almost interchangeable for the other skills. Some didn't care for anything other than software development, other small business analyst skills as being just as uh, Important. However, the consultees of which we uh, we consulted with 10 different SMEs and companies across Scotland in the digital health sector and um, other issues which came up were things like the, a huge need for data scientists, um, people with knowledge of how to analyse large data sets and people who can test software as well because that's really, really important to show that the software works. Um, and one of the points which came up in every one of the uh, consultations was that the most difficult skill combination to come by are people with the knowledge of the health and care ecosystem, but 
having those people that have IT expertise as well, there's not a great pool of people that have both of those um, skill sets to pick from. Um, that kind of leads us to the main point of the, the whole report was to identify the skills gaps, uh, the provision gaps of said skills. So when we did uh, just a small window desk based research, we uncovered that 15 of the 19 universities in Scotland offer, offer computing science courses and 14 provide uh, postgraduate courses. Everyone offers ICT in some aspect, but hard computing science is only offered in 15. Between 2012 and 2016, we saw a 20% increase in enrollment, which is counter to the rest of the UK, where uh, enrollment in computing science has been born since 2002, going from around, I think, 41,000 to 18,000 in that, uh, that time frame. Um, there are many masters in Scotland that talk about telehealth and telemedicine and e-health, but there is only one digital health MSc in Scotland that's taught in the uh, University of Strathclyde um, that focuses on digital health systems. And uh, there's no undergraduate provision in digital health, although it was very nice to hear that data science is going to be taught to every university students. I'm going to see that happening across the board. Uh, and Again, further on from the computing sciences in Scotland, almost 30% of all computer science graduates are unemployed six months after graduating. Um, we have stats on college as well, in computing sciences in college, 90% are unemployed six months after graduating. Uh, this showed us that all the skills that are being provided are not meeting the demand of the, the sector. So this is in the NHS and in the digital health corporate sector, everything. Here. Students are being taught at the university is in making them ready for that workforce. And this was reflected with the consultation as well, where the employers had said that graduates who did not have the right work experience, they've not had any kind of commercial experience, or not, or don't think entrepreneurially, and they don't have soft skills like work ethic and stuff like that, and they have insufficient technical knowledge. There was also, particularly talking about software engineers and software developers, the SMEs, particularly smaller SMEs, find it really difficult to attract these kind of graduates because there's so little of them coming out of university, they can expect a pretty high salary in the corporates, but these smaller SMEs can afford that. But when they did actually get some of these software um, engineers and developers in, they thought, these don't actually have the skills we need, even though they're expecting double the salary we're offering, which just didn't match what, what the, the courses were saying that they were teaching them. Um, from all this, we came up with a list of recommendations. The list up here is a lot smaller than our actual list, but that's still recommendations. And we will be publishing the full report in the, the next month, and we'll be happy to share that with the event organizers so that anyone wants a copy can send a copy. But, our recommendations are focused on three broad themes. A review of the existing education and training provision for digital health. So we want to increase the availability of variety of courses. Anyone should be learning data science and nowadays it's, it's just a fact of life that you're going to use that no matter what career path you choose. There needs to be a review of curriculum at all levels of education. We see digital literacy as needing to be as just as important as numeracy and overall literacy. So from a primary school level through to uh, further higher education level, there needs to be digital uh, teaching embedded in all aspects. And then also a development of the current workforce. So anyone who is leaving uh, medicine and going and feeling a bit unprepared, there is ongoing um, even greater strides to make sure that you will have access to the best training you can. Yep, and then our second uh, recommendation was about better alignment between the industry and the education sector to allow for students um, to have much better industry experience before they leave university. So sandwich courses, industrial placements are not always so easy to come by. Um, and encouraging that within the collaboration within those two sectors is really important. And then uh, raising the profile of digital health is gone. I think this event and at the DHI we host uh, monthly breakfast events just to explain how there's better, uh, better find career pathways in digital health and for doctors and people who aren't medically trained, digital health is an option. Too many people go into you know, data science and think that they will end up being an analyst somewhere, they could work in the digital health sector 
uh, promote change management to make sure that digital transformation happens properly, that we aren't just walking in technology that's slipping off the wall when you chuck at the NHS, and that uh, we need to improve the digital, digital skills across all levels of education. That's just the same point again, but we really like that point. We really want to be able to we think it's important. Um, and hopefully that's fast enough. Uh, thank you, and I think there's going to be a panel afterwards. So,